Uh, it's a way to kind of bring income, whether it's an addition to the work you're already doing, or if it's something that you just want to pursue straight away. And I had the privilege in, you know, shortly after my book, Mastering the Trade came out, gosh, a long time ago now, um, I spent a couple of years traveling with the Chicago Board of Trade uh, all over the world, uh, all, all over Asia, all over Europe. And it was great. You know, of course, that was before they were a public company. So we're flying first class and night, you know, six, five and six star hotels. But I got to talk to traders from all over the world. And no matter if even if it was a country that did not basically, you know, it was supposed to not like America and America wasn't supposed to like it. Everybody there loved trading and we all, you know, it was all got along and stuff like that, too. So I, I think it's just the great common denominator and essentially this bonding function of humanity in terms of being able to focus on a particular dream. And if you can have the discipline and the strategy to do it, uh, your dream is achieved. But the markets are designed to essentially stomp on your dreams and grind them into dust and take your money. And to the extent that you're not aware of it is to the extent that you fall prey to it. And the markets these days are even worse about that because they're enticing more and more people to get into the markets to do you know, all the things that are there. And we're going to talk about that. And essentially, you know, let's just dive into that. So the current market action. You get all this volatility and you get all this compression. It's up, it's down. And it can be a little frustrating if you're not used to this kind of thing, right? Now, I would say that I think that the markets have changed. And, 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 you know, I've been doing this a long time. They do change. They do evolve over time based on the market participants, based on the tools that are available. Okay, what are tools that are available? Well, remember, there used to be monthly options only and then weekly. Now there's daily options, right? And there's all these new instruments that come on and they continue to add different types of pressures on the market. So ideally, yes. Uh, my favorite way to trade would be to, you know, say like, you know what, I'm going to throw on a big swing trade. I'm going to buy a couple hundred contracts off this daily and weekly squeeze. And then I'm going to go to the beach for three or four weeks. I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a six figure trade, maybe even a seven figure trade, because that's the way the market works. And there are there are opportunities for that. We just obviously we just recently had some big moves, May and June and things like that, too. So there are opportunities for that. But the market has changed and to the extent that there's not this explosion of valuation being created. Okay. We're not in 0% interest rates anymore. We've got a situation where that, you know, it created conditions for that, those kind of trades to happen consistently, but now we've got high interest rates. There's an explosion in SPX day trading that actually is impacting the markets. It's keeping, it keeps it more contained within a range. And if, and, and it, when it contains in a range, the stocks that are part of it are also contained in a range. And then there's geopolitical tensions and yada, yada, yada. And it's making the markets less trendy and more whippy. And this is a trend I see continuing for some time. So do we just grin and bear it? Do we suffer through it? And it's like, wah, 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 this is too hard. Well, there's always a way in the markets. There's always a niche to exploit. And the key is to find and focus on the niche instead of trying to trade everything. And, and I love this quote. Uh, if you guys are, if you've ever listened to Abraham Hicks, she's a little bit out there, but I, I love her stuff. When you believe something is hard, the universe demonstrates the difficulty. When you believe something is easy, the universe demonstrates the ease. And, and I think that's very true in the market. If you wake up in the market, it's like, oh, this is hard. The market's going to show you that it's hard. But if you're like, well, how could this be easy? And then, you know, you start looking at it from that point of view. So, one of the things, this is a, an article that was in the Wall Street Journal yesterday. I said, amateurs pile into 24-hour options. It's just gambling. Uh, this is fantastic. So, and, and what's happening here now, you're going to see on social media, starting from 2020 to now. Uh, of course, 2020, 2020 and 2021, this was the huge rally, right? We were trading Tesla uh, we were doing all these things and there wasn't a lot of mention of zero DTE. You know, there wasn't, you know, it, was, it wasn't something that was very active and not people really talking about. But once the meme stocks died, you know, once we couldn't make money on game stock anymore, it's like, wow, look at these options. And now 2023, just boom, this explosion. 
Um, and, and the thing about it is, is because, you know, you can buy these cheap out of the money calls for 50 cents or these out of the money puts for 50 cents. And then what happens is this is called the buy and pray setup. And sometimes it works, right? Just like sometimes when you go to Las Vegas and you put the, you bet on number three on roulette, sometimes that works and it only has to hit once. And then all of a sudden they come back and they keep chasing this dopamine. It was like, maybe it could happen again. And it's just, you know, nobody cares about GameStop anymore, but man, they're really looking at this, right? Okay. So what does that mean for us? That means we can take advantage of what's called amateur hour. So new and experienced traders are flocking to these zero DT SPX, SPX options. And this is turning smart traders into degenerate gamblers. There's an addiction to the quick fix, and that also extends to key stocks like NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, et cetera, and these other big liquid leaders. Now combined, their activity causes a lot of fake breakouts and breakdowns, which is the oldest trick in the book, all right? Uh, I used to talk to these floor traders, and they would draw straws, okay? This is exactly what they would do. They said, we got to draw straws to see who's going to take the high tick of the day to fool the dentists. Okay, what does that mean? It means there are a lot of systems out there where the S&Ps would go up and there might be a level, you know, and this was a long time ago. So let's call it 850. And the S&Ps would be sitting there at 850. And then they would draw straws in the pit to say who would buy who would buy the offer at 851? Because there was nobody there that wanted it. But if they did that, all the dentist systems would go off and then all these buy orders would come in because they're supposed to buy the breakout and then they would short that and then it would die, okay? Oldest trick in the book. That's what's happening today in the SPX options market as well. So we want to understand this dynamic and we want to exploit it <clears throat> because in trading, it is not all about, it's not all about, all traders joining hands together, zippity doo ya, you know, zippity doo da, and um, let's uh, let's all sing kumbaya and make money together. No, it is money transferring from one set of accounts, typically people who are impatient, into uh, another set of accounts, typically people who are more patient, and uh, that's just the name of the game. So, most of the time, this will mean taking the opposite side of their trades in a very systematic way. All right. So what is a sandbox? We're talking about the sandbox. Uh, pardon me. I had to take a little sip of Dayquil there. It might even be mixed with a little tequila just to take the edge off. So what is a sandbox? And so the sandbox is essentially this zone where price essentially uh, is contained. And there are machines out there waiting patiently for price to jump outside of the sandbox. And that is when they pounce, okay? And so they're over here waiting for breakdowns. You know, they're over here, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting for a little pop-up. They're over here, you know, waiting for that, that kid to fall out. Uh, they're down here, they're over here, and they are ready to pounce. They do have zero emotions. Uh, but they are they're there to kill you know they're there to you know throttle any price action that goes outside of the sandbox and that's so important to remember basically in here it's safe but not not a lot's happening and so what happens is a lot of traders you know they're like oh well let's let's go you know uh, let's get outside of the sandbox and play and then that's when the machines come and just absolutely rip their faces off it's a sight to behold so, so what does this look like? Is this real? So this is a, you know, a couple of years ago, I got a friend of mine. He's, this is a $15 million computer. Uh, you know, you think if you got a tower in your, in your home office and what it looks like, uh, this is like the equivalent of, I think it's like 870 computers or something like that. And it's all running off of this one laptop and they run 128 different AI screens uh, that's run by 12 different managing AIs that has a super management AI. And they are doing different strategies. But the main strategy that they look for is what I simply call kind of the sandbox trade. And they've got all these signs around their office, which are awesome. It's like you can't predict random market forecast, algo bot trench warfare. And they know that, you know, they are, they are trading against retail, but they're trading against uh, different algos as well. And then I love this. If you don't know what your edge is, you don't have one. 
And if you're in the markets, you know, there's that saying at the poker table, if you don't know who the sucker is, it's you. And it's the same thing in the markets. If you're just like, well, I think I'm just going to buy this here and see what happens. You're the sucker because there's all these, you know, machines and experience and patient traders waiting to take the opposite side of that trade. Okay, so we want to be able to. So that's one thing to say, right? Like, oh, yeah, you take the opposite side of the trade. Well, well, exactly. What does that mean? So here is the S&Ps over the last two days. S&P futures. And you're going to see, you know, it's like, okay, there's some spikes here and, you know, we're kind of chopping around here. And, and in hindsight, yeah, in hindsight, of course, you short right there. And in hindsight, of course, you're buying right there. And in hindsight, of course, you're buying right here. And in hindsight, of course, you're shorting right here. But how in real time, when the moment is happening, okay, how do you have the confidence to say, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm going to short this instead of like, oh, I'm going to buy this because I think it's going to go higher, right? How do you know that? And this is where the sandbox definitions come in. So boom. Now, what this is right here is, you know, essentially every two hours, there's these dynamic levels that'll be uh, initiated. And this, this is not after the fact. This is like in real time. And every two hours, they'll generate new levels. And so I'll sit there and say like, okay, basically, you know, if it comes up to this level, that is, there's only about a 6% chance that the market's going to be able to close above this level within this two hour period. The algos know that when they see something like this, they pounce. Okay. Now, sometimes it'll just drift back down to here. Other times it'll make a round trip all the way back down to the lower edge of the sandbox. Okay. So what's, what's nice about this is this is an example of the entire sandbox uh, for that two hours. And it's rare that you're going to hit both sides of it. And of course, overnight, you know, things are going to get a little quieter. Um, today we had this, you know, we had this little spike up and then we kind of came down to the lower part of the sandbox. And then over lunch, we stayed within the, you know, the inner workings of the sandbox. Um, and then, you know, this little puke here, and then we kind of drifted back up. So, so now it looks, it's like, okay, well, this isn't too bad. This is something that's manageable. And so, you know, what is this, you know, what, how does it work and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but the stuff that I'm looking for and I'm talking about is like, yeah, there's all this price movement, but really what we're looking for is the patience and the discipline to know when to strike. Okay. And typically it's at these extreme levels. So it's like, okay, yeah, this is something where I could short futures. Or if you're, you know, if you're trading like NVIDIA and NVIDIA is kind of moving with the market, you could buy puts on NVIDIA. You know, I mean, obviously kind of the S&Ps kind of drive a lot of different things here. Um, more conservative, you could sell a call credit spread, right? You could buy puts, a lot of different things, as long as you know that there's only a 6% chance that the market's going to close above this and a much higher likelihood that's going to come down. And in fact, we can see stats on any market that we want to trade. We can go back and here we have 361 periods that are analyzed and it's telling us like, okay, well, um, how many times has it closed below this lower level here, okay, only 8% of the time. So 92% of the time, even if it goes through the level, it's still gonna come back in it. Um, and it also, even even the levels that are a little bit, you know, the inner levels, which we'll talk about those too, and it's like, okay, great. Well, how much time does it close in between those levels? 65% of the time. How much does time does it close in between the extreme levels? 85% of the time. All right, great. So now you have levels where you can sell iron condors. Um, you could, uh, and if and if the next two hours are about the same, you can keep it on, or if it adjusts, you can make an adjustment. And so it's kind of it's giving you statistical things, non-emotional things that you can work with. And if you just have a little bit of a knowledge as a trader, and you understand, you know, you know, you don't have to understand statistics, but just you know, it's probabilities game, right? If you got a seventy-five percent chance that you're going to get a blackjack, you're going to make a higher bet than if you only have a twenty-five percent chance that you're going to get a blackjack. So, so that's what I like about this because it maps out the playing field, kind of maps out the sandbox, gives you probabilities. You can double check and make sure like, okay, are we, you know, are we still within the realm of 93% uh, probability of success if I were to take action at this level here, like that happened today, you know, when it's happening, it's scary. But if you go like, well, geez, if we're flying down here and this is telling me I've got a 92% probability of success because it's only an 8% chance that's going to close below this, then I'm going to buy something here or sell a put credit spread. Yeah, you know what? Guess what? If you go to Vegas, your odds are 51%. People are making stupid bets all the time. That might be a scary bet, but it certainly ain't a stupid bet. 
All right, so what are these levels real quick? Now, some of you may know these are called quant pivots. If you don't know what this is, I'm going to give you a real quick kind of explanation, and then we're going to look at some you know, charts and stuff like that that are happening now. So uh, question, well, why are these, how are these different from floor trader pivots? Okay, floor trader pivots, you take the previous day's high, low, close, you know, you divide uh, by three, and you have these levels that are there all day. So this goes back 30 days, looks at the dynamics of the particular stock. Now, this is an older chart. You know, this is a pre-split, but just to show you an example. So you'll see here that the upper zone, okay, the upper probability zone where the algos start to get interested is like twice as high as the lower probability zone. So it's not like, oh, here's the midpoint and it's going to be an equal amount of points to the upside and an equal amount of points to the downside. That's more like a floor trader pivot. No, this actually takes into account is the nature of the particular stock is like, is it more likely you're going to have extreme moves to the upside? Well, if so, we're going to give it more room to the upside uh, versus the downside. All right. But the same at the same time, if you come over here to the S&Ps, then in this particular time, there's more emphasis like, wow, we're going to give it twice as much room to the downside or not quite twice as much as we are to the upside. So what this means is, is that it only in this case would take a rally you know, a rally from here to here to trigger the algos to come in and short, but they would not step in until it fell further. Like they're giving it more room to the downside before they're going to step in and take action. And so this is kind of happening dynamically. Now, this is kind of the, this is what I call the sandbox. And then we'll also see the, you know, I call it the one standard deviation from that, which is where I typically like to get in and take some action. You can also drill down. This is the 30 minute chart. and This shows you kind of the daily levels as well. Um, and we'll talk more about that and kind of what that means. Uh, but essentially, or what we're kind of looking at here. Um, all right, so let's go to, yeah, so this is the part that I get excited about. So we have, you know, essentially what this does is says, all right, I'm going to come in here and say, this is the sandbox, and this is where price is going to be uh, typically 70% of the time. So this is a tradable box where I get interested and I'll trade and I will do some trades inside of that. Meaning that, you know, if we're kind of drifting down, there's not a lot of energy. Yeah. I'll take some action here or we're drifting up. And there's not a lot of energy. I'll take some action here, but where I have alert set because I don't want to miss this is we get a spike up into this zone. Okay. Or we get a spike down into that zone, 92% probability of success because what happens on something like that is like everybody gets excited and they start buying and they start paying up and extra premium for these out of the money calls and, you know, and SPX a lot of times is driving it, but then people are going to be chasing Tesla. They're going to be chasing Amazon, all this stuff. And it's a screaming signal for the algos. Again, not all the time, but 92% of the time to take the opposite side of that. Okay. Now, the good news is, is like, yeah, there are times when it just keeps on going. And those are kind of like walk up days and walk down days. And we have the ability to kind of understand that uh, by looking at the internals, like the ticks. Uh, the ticks are the classic you know, if if they're above zero and they're hanging out at like 600 all day, yeah, you know what? If we get up here, we may just kind of keep going, but that's rare. But at least we have something that we can watch to give us that insight like, oh, this is a walk up day. This happens, you know, once a month, twice a quarter, something like that. Let's not fight that. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I like. That's just money in the bank. And so what I have found, well, I'll talk a little bit more about kind of the trading plan I have around it because I, I'm... I'm getting, you know, I got, so when I get frustrated with the market and I get in alignment with my goals, I kind of start cutting things out. And that's what I want to kind of talk about tonight too. It's like, all right, what's the plan with all this and, and why is it important and what are we going to do? And a lot of it comes down to a lifestyle choice. So same thing here with the S&Ps. Uh, again, this is the sandbox and 70% of the time price will be contained within that. When it does pop out, this is an extremely high probability fading opportunity. Okay. And, and a lot of times what I'll do too, if it's coming down here, yeah, I'll do half a position here. And if it does come down, I can do my second half and, and I'm fine with that. And that's actually a, you know pretty reasonable in terms of a trading plan. All right. So here's a chart of from today. This is kind of how I look at this stuff. This is the NDX. Uh, I took this after the market closed today. So here we have a 30 minute chart. And then the sandboxes that I have on here are essentially for the entire day. Okay. So, so for the entire day and most of the time, the market will stay within this little sandbox. And indeed, you can see that the NASDAQ got excited today. Oh, we're going to rally, but it, it faltered here and then, you know, kind of petered out. 
And this is great insight because why? Well, when when you see the Nasdaq gets all excited here, a lot of times people are like, "Oh my God!" You know, of course we're gonna it's it's, it's gonna go. Typically, that's where it peters out. That's where you one if you're long take profits. You know, for God's sakes, books book the profits. Don't hold on to it forever. Um, if you've got a short-term pl- trade, and then from there you can, and that's the most important part. Um, so you don't you, nothing worse than you start off and you're like, "Wow, everything's going great." And then it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I gave back all my profits. Now you know why, okay? Now you, now you have a map of why and how that could happen, which is going to help quite a bit. Now that's, so that gives me the, I, I can see this on the 30 minute chart. And I can say like, these are the zones for the entire day. And then on the five minute chart, I'm looking at two hour zones because this, this is more of the day trade. So you can see today, um, now remember these, this is that L2 level. And on that L2 level, we can go to the stats and say, wow, it only pushes and closes below that 7.1% of the time. So when we sold off there towards the end of the day, uh, we were in the room, we're talking about NVIDIA. It's like, and NVIDIA actually held up pretty good, but it's like, well, you know, the NASDAQ came down to L2. There's a 93% chance that we're going to bounce from here. So let's go ahead and hold NVIDIA. And we did. And NVIDIA, you know, had a nice little rally into the close there. And so it's stuff like that where instead of getting manipulated by the market and getting scared, it's able to see kind of the sandbox and the blueprint in in advance and, and do it like that. Uh, question for the zero DTE trades, are there time frames below two hours worth tracking? So it's a good question. I do, I have been watching, oh, so over here on the two minute chart, um, these are the 30 minute boxes and they're not bad. I, this is This is my preference for day trades. You get a little more meat on the bone. But if you are looking to do and especially if like, you know, if you're like more scalping and stuff like that, then this is this comes into play as well. So I, you know, on something like this, I'm kind of looking at this as a as a reference. You know, if we're coming up against here and we're just hanging out there, it's like, okay, I want to know that. And then I can kind of come over and see like, okay, great. You know, where are we in the context of this? So when it popped up today against that daily level, it's like, oh well, geez, we're also you know, we're also here at this, you know, at this level too, and, you know, big rejection and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So I, I've found it, it's, um, you know, I've just found it to be, I was talking about it with Cody earlier and he's like, man, uh, cause there's other tools that I'll incorporate in this too. And I'll show you that on a chart, but all of a sudden it just makes this market so clean. It just makes it, um, I don't know, easy to understand. And it's kind of like looking at the market the same way a machine would look at the market. You know, whereas instead of wondering like, oh my gosh, you know, is this going to turn and stuff like that too? Um, sometimes I'll just be working on other stuff and I'll hear the alert, you know, oh, I got an L2 alert. What's happening? Oh, awesome. Let me put on a trade. Instead of staring at the screen and nail biting and blah, 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 blah. It's just kind of, because a lot of times we get bored and we get bored and like, oh, let's just buy this right here versus, you know, you're, you have a, a dynamic level. Now, another question that'll come up is like, what about a voodoo line? I love voodoo lines. Okay. So on a voodoo line, I'm just going to, you know, there might be a voodoo line here and a voodoo line here, and they're just kind of static. And it could be a long time before we hit one of those. Now, when we do hit one of those, I absolutely want to know about it. But while those are happening, the market's going to play in a sandbox. Okay. This is a sandbox for today. Tomorrow's sandbox is going to be a little bit different. Is there a big voodoo line within the sandbox for the day? All right. And so that's what I love about the sandbox is that defines the period of time that you're looking at right now. And if that sandbox actually includes a voodoo line, absolutely. I want to know about that, but it doesn't all the time. So that's, that's, what's kind of nice too. It kind of, kind of gives you some actionable Intel in between key levels like this. Now here's Nvidia. So we were just looking at the NDX. What about individual stocks? Boom. Here's Nvidia. Same thing. All right. Guess what? If I get an L2 on NVIDIA on a daily, this is the daily box, I'm going to buy it because every time it seems almost seems like every time it comes down there, it seems like it rallies. Well, guess what? Because only 6.1% of the time does it actually close below that. And that's for the entire day. All right. So now what happens is I can sit here and say, okay, I want to get 10 big stocks, Apple, Google, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, maybe LRCX, AVGO, Tesla, and just put up these little alerts because I don't want to have to stare at these charts all day. And anytime we drop to L2, I want to hear ding, 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 ding. And um, if I'm feeling, you know, sometimes I might even just put up trades. Like if, you know, you can do these dynamic trades, like if, 
NVIDIA gets to 443 by the 440 calls, you know, at market. So you can set up conditional orders like that. So, you know, if you're, if you want to, you know, kind of do it like that, but if we're trading, we're watching all of a sudden now, instead of sitting there and trying to force something to do, oh, we got to do, we got to do something. We got to do something. It's just waiting for these moments in time and having specific actionable. And again, I love the term sandbox because essentially once you get to the edge of the sandbox, remember that's when the machines come in, but it's the same thing on the upside too. And so if we look at, um, you know, these days, especially in this current market, I love these gap ups into these levels because typically, man, if you're holding overnight, sell, 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 sell. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're aggressive, you could even buy some puts or sell some call credit spreads. Uh, but that's, that's been one of my favorite trades in this market as well. And so that's, you know, again, and I'm, I'm just, one of the things too is like, I, you know, so do we, do we watch this on a hundred different stocks? No, you don't need to. I watch it on the S&P 500. So that's, SPY, SPX, you know, ES, the NASDAQ, NDX, QQQ, or, or NQ, and then like pick eight stocks, you know, eight liquid stocks. You'll have plenty to do. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to touch all the water. There's a saying of like Dan Sullivan, one of my mentors told me, he's like, look, when you're, you know, don't get depressed because you missed out on a trade or a business opportunity. If you're at the beach and you see a surfer, and they come out of the water and they're almost always smiling because the surfing was, you know, was, it was just a great experience. Um, you never go up to a surfer and say, Hey, Hey, how is the surfing? And, and then they never will go, man, I'm so depressed. I just couldn't touch all the water out there. No, they just, they caught the waves that they could catch and they enjoyed it. That's the same thing in trading. So, all right. So what are some, here's some recent setups um, and styles that we've done with this. So this is a, uh, this is one we did the other day, called this one out in the room. So we gapped down and then we rallied to, you know, again, this is this is the inner edge of the sandbox where price is going to stay um, 70% of the time. Now, obviously, I love these extremes if we can get them, but I'm also fine uh, initiating some trades here. And so we sold call credit spreads, uh, did 25 contracts. And then when we dropped down to the lower part of the box, we just got out. So I think we sold them at, like, yeah, we sold them at 640 bottom back at $2.15. Boom, done. That's it. No like oh, mystery or anything like that. And and a couple things can happen in this situation. So either, either it does bounce and we go up to here and great. What I'll do then is I'll set up another one. I'll set up another one there because now I know that there's only a 92%, I mean, a, there's a 92% chance we'll stay contained in that. And then maybe we kind of drift back down here and we make money on both, but I'm not worried about it because I've got, that's part of the plan. But this is something I see that's very typical where, you know, you get a little action here at this part of the sandbox and then you just kind of drift down to this part of the sandbox. And this is the inner, the inner edge. It's not even the extreme edge. And we spend a lot of time there and it's very, very tradable, especially with zero DTE, because, you know, in this case, we sold the 4475, bought the 4495, collected the premium. And you know, I think we're in the trade for like 45 minutes or something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, you know, as I always like to say, you know, it beats working for a living. Um, and then another one here, this was one where, again, we just kind of came down, you know, we're dropping down, you know, the market's going to fall. And I'll talk more about this in a second too. But you can see we get down to that first level. And remember, this is the main sandbox right here. And we come down and, oh my God, it's going to, you know, the price is going to end. I remember this trade because I was like, man, this one's kind of hard to hold on to. And it looked like it was going to fall apart. And we we're doing this one in the room. And then finally you get the pop. And this happens all the time. Like, let's fake them out, get them in, let's get everybody buying the puts and then rip their faces off. And so we sold the 45, in this case, we were at 4,500, sold the 4,500 put, bought the 4,485. Of course, you know, this is a hundred contracts at a time. Uh, bottom at, you know, got in at 415, like bottom back at two. And, you know, good. I think my price, my exit price was a buck 80 and it did hit it. So it was a little bit more than that. Um, but yeah, then that's it. And that was the only trade I did that day. And that's, and I'm completely, completely fine with that. So, so a question then is what is, you know, what is this? You know, we, we've been talking about these quant pivots for those that are familiar with them. Obviously you already know about them. If you haven't seen them before, that's what those are. But what I found has been very great in this market is we got the sandbox and then we combine it with the quick hits. And what the quick hits do is they're bringing in all these kind of 
uh, like a uh, momentum from different time frames. And when the momentum starts turning on these different time frames, you start getting these arrows. And so it's telling you like, okay, wow, you know, I'm on the five minute chart, but the five and the 10 and the 15 and the 20 minute oscillators are actually turning, even though price looks like crap. And that's what's great about this. Because if you're looking at just price here, if you're looking at just price, it looks like it's going to fall apart, but you can see momentum on different time frames turning higher. And that's always your first heads up uh, that things are about to roll. And in this case, roll higher. So what is that? Um, and, and this is something where, for those of you who know about this, I was trying to, you know, my oldest son had approached me and said, hey, you know, I want to make a hundred bucks a day. And I said, don't we all? But we found a way uh, to make that work. And it was basically, you know, and of course, watching six different time frames is, you know, really hard. Uh, I talked to Eric, and then he just basically took all that, threw it onto one chart. And then what I was interested in for my son is that he could just see the arrows. And it's like, you know, if we're falling and you get three arrows, buy the stock. And, you know, and vice versa. And that was it. Like, he didn't even want to look at these oscillators. I just wanted those arrows so I could give him a legit thing to look at when it's turning. All right, great. So now here we have the SPX from today. This is the, oh, the last couple of days. And so now we've got the sandbox. Okay, so here's our sandbox. Bada boom, bada bing. Um, well, here, let me be more accurate here. So we've got our sandbox. And then this is the extreme edge of the sandbox. On the daily chart, most of the time we're staying in the sandbox, any extreme edges are always very tradable, but you know, in a quiet market like this, this is great. So we can see here, it's like, okay, we, you know, we're we're coming down. It looks like the end of the world. Oh, we got an arrow. Okay, what was that? Oh, that was, you know, here's this oscillator that's turning. Okay, well, that's guess what? That's a heads up that it's, you know, that it's that it's that it's turning. Uh, even more importantly, it's like, oh my gosh, we're rallying, and and uh, and of course, if we rally up to here, you always sell. You always sell call credit spreads in that situation, and then uh, shortly thereafter, you get the you get the roll. That's great. Um, but this is really my my uh, bread and butter is the five minute. Because on the five minute, I have a sandbox that develops every two hours. And again, remember, that's the sandbox. And if you're coming up to the extreme where there's only uh, like a 7% chance that we're going to be able to get through it, you always sell it, especially the first try. And you can see here it did push through and basically was just stuck here. And then boom, the next two hour sandbox got established. Okay, and that was pretty quiet. And then look at this, today it's like, oh my God, we sold off, sold off, sold off. What, we actually pushed through it, but we came back in because only 8% of the time, or let me double check here, uh, what's the close, oh, 7.9% of the time um, over the last 127 periods has that actually closed below it, okay? So that's, I, I just think it's invaluable information. And again, more recently, um, I've been looking at um, on the two minute chart, just the 30 minute ones. And I haven't done much with them yet. It's just more like, okay, let's just kind of see what they do. It might be a little tight, kind of a time frame. might be good for futures into the close. You can see here in the close, we kind of drifted back up there. And so I thought that was, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, all right. So here's, this is my, this is like my favorite setup right here. This is a great example of it. And, and I have always, I love selling calls because so much money is lost by people chasing markets. And so I, I do have a preference of selling calls. It doesn't mean I won't sell puts. But this right here, man, this is bread and butter. So five minute chart. We did this one in the room. I think it was last week. And boom, we're, we're strong. You know, the markets are up 20 points on the S&Ps. And look at this. Remember, this is the sandbox. And then this is the extreme edge of the sandbox where there's only a la 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 8.9% chance that we're going to actually close above that. All right, great. So I'm selling call credit spreads. Now you can see right here. So now, then we got to wait like five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And it looks like the market's going to go. Okay. But, but look at these arrows, these sell arrows are telling us momentum's rolling over. Okay. So it's giving us, you know, cause, it, cause price, if you're just looking at prices, like dear God, I mean, look at this, we got new highs right here. I mean, am I, am I going to get rolled over here, but the momentum's rolling over, even though price is going what? Higher. Okay. That's, that's where this stuff gets really helpful. So you got now this high, high, high probability level. You've got the confidence that momentum from different time frames is telling you just hold slow your roll. This market is about to roll over. And so it gives you confidence to hold on. 
And so on this particular trade, it was we sold the uh, 4525 calls, bought the 4550s. Um, we bought it was out of the money because when we did this, price was 4517. So I like, I mean, there's different schools of thought here, and I've done both, but going a little bit out of the money kind of gives you, you know, you get that little bit of an edge in case we're just going to keep chopping around. Sold it at 545, bought it back at $2.42, you know, 30 grand. Awesome. All right. Well, this brings up a quite now, granted, I'm this is a larger contract. I'm trading a, I mean, a larger account. So I'm trading 100 lots. Um, you know, if you're trading a $10,000 account, obviously you're not going to trade 100 lots. Uh, but we're going to, I'm going to talk exactly like what uh, ratio I use for that. But this brings up a good question is how much is enough? You know, when you're doing this kind of stuff, how, how much is enough? I mean, are we trying to make all the money in the world? Uh, or are we trying to make a good living? Okay. And this, and I go back and forth on this. And as you guys know, I mean, there are times when the markets get hot and heavy and I do kind of like really focus on these bigger trades and don't get me wrong. I love them, but they're not like relaxing, you know, holding on for three weeks to make a huge trade in Google. That was three weeks of like, okay, is this going to work? You know, yeah, I'm holding on to it, but I got a lot of money invested in this and blah, blah, blah. So, you, you know, you got that self-talk going because we all know that nothing's guaranteed, but man, the setup's there. And of course, by being able to be comfortable, being uncomfortable and sit with my, whatever anxiety was coming up, it paid off big, right? But um, I don't necessarily want to, when there's oppor when that opportunity presents itself, yes, I want to do it. But then there are times when it's like, you know what? I just want to make some money so I can... I need to feed my zebras. I got some rare coins I want to buy. I got to put, you know, I'm putting my kids through some schools. Um, there's some mortgages to pay. What's the amount of money uh, that I need in order to do that? And just kind of, you know, what do you need to live on? And, um, and this is just, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to end up somewhere else. And if it's just like, oh, I just want to make as much money as I possibly can, that just opens up the door to so much trash, you know, so much, so many mistakes. So I figured out through trial and error. And um, and I, I know this is, sounds funny because, oh, I can live on 20 grand a day. But remember, it's, it's this is me also um, using this money to invest. You know, I like to use this money. I want to buy gold. I want to buy land. I've got these mortgage payments to pay. I need to find a female bongo. Those prices keep going up. So this is, this is, uh, uh, I know there was, uh, not, you know, 10 years ago, uh, maybe 15 years ago, 20,000 a month would have been amazing. So it, everybody's different, right? And that's, and that's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are right now. Uh, I know some some people are trading accounts much bigger than mine. A lot of people are trading accounts smaller than mine. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The, what we want to figure out is what is your goal? What is your goal? So my perfect scenario would be, okay, if I can make 20 grand a day on one trade selling a credit spread, that would be amazing. That means I'm waiting for the right level. Okay, I'm not doing something right at the open. I'm probably waiting till you know about 30 minutes into the open. Um, I've I know what instruments I want to use. You know, I know if I want to go at the money or out of the money. I know how wide the the spread is going to be, and I know my uncle point. All that I know, and I know not every trade is going to work, but I do know that a lot of the trades are going to work. Okay, I know a lot of the trades are going to work. So the key is to wait for those one or two opportunities a day where the probability of trade working out is high and then have the discipline to not screw around and lose it out of boredom or a need for excitement. So why a number? Yes, there are going to be rare days where the market explodes or implodes and a bigger potential trade can be made, but it is the exception and not the rule, okay? And I'm not in the mood right now to sit around and wait for the big move to happen. When it happens, great. I'll be there. I'll be looking at it. But in the meantime, I got zebras to feed. You know, I got to figure out how to do that today. So without a number, what happens? We fall prey to FOMO. You know, if you don't have a plan, you don't have a number, it's like, oh my God, I got to go, you know, what's this stock doing? What's this stock doing? Oh my God, CNB said that this, I'm, I'm going to do this. And then suddenly you got like 50 trades going on and you've completely lost your mojo. You know, you've completely lost your focus. You've completely lost why you're trading. 
You got to be careful about that. You know, fear of missing out, chase and over trade, try to catch all the moves, give back well-earned profits due to lack of discipline. You know, you make money in the morning, you piss it away in the afternoon and on and on and on. I personally just want to grab the cash. And if there's, if it's obviously not a day where the markets are exploding, which most days it's, it's not, then I want to go to the gym. Okay. And I love this. You know, when you focus on you, you grow. And when you focus on shit, shit grows. So if you don't have a plan, the market is going to distract you so it can take all of your money. Okay. And that's its job. That's how markets function is that the patient takes money from the impatient. And if you are involved in FOMO and stuff like that, your impatience fires off and you're dead. So it's just period end. So what's your number? Let's say, let's just say it's a thousand dollars a day. Okay. I know everybody's going to be different, but let's say it's a thousand dollars a day and you're trading SPX options. Okay. So how, how are you going to do that? So do you trade one contract and you try to make 10 points? Catching 10 points in the S&Ps, that seems reasonable. But what about doing two contracts and just trading, making five points? Or how about you take trade five contracts and all you got to do is make two points? Or do you trade 10 lots and make one point? Okay, well, there's pros and cons of each. The larger size obviously is nice because it's not hard to make a point, but you're taking a lot more risk. If it goes against you, all of a sudden you could be down five points really quick, quickly and you're risking five to make one. So I found a good rule of thumb is to start with one SPX contract per 20K. Now, obviously, if you're trading a smaller account, then you'd be trading SPY. Um, the SPY, the SPY, SPY calls are one tenth the size of SPX. Okay, so that's an easy way to do that. So you're going to do one SPX contract per 20K in your account or one SPY contract per 2K. Okay. And then have the flexibility to add to it if warranted. You know, it's, let's say you do some sell some call credit spreads at, at H1, but it goes up to H2. Great. You know, you did one here. And if it does go up here, you can do another one because that's in your plan. Um, and then, of course, most of the time, I'm just doing credit spreads. There are times where if we're up here, it might make sense to buy an out of the money put debit spread or buy a put or even short the S&P futures, which I'm fine doing. I've also found, though, that credit spreads are the most forgiving. Um, you know, the only the only real downside of credit spreads is if the market collapses, you miss out on what could have been a bigger move had you bought puts. That's it. All the rest is upside. You know, you could trade sideways the rest of the day and still make money. Had you bought puts, you would have lost money. You know, there's all these advantages. And if your main goal is consistency, oftentimes the only thing you need to do is stop everything else and just trade credit spreads uh, because credit spreads will enhance uh, your consistency, especially on choppy days uh, and especially if you have specific levels that you're watching like that. Um, also, me personally, I don't want to scalp. I want to do 27 trades a day to make my number. It's not worth it. You're going to be exhausted and by the end of the day. And in that point, you're trading against machines anyway. I don't want to trade more than once or twice a day. That's it. That's me. If you want to trade 10 times a day, that's fine. The system is for people who are fine being patient and waiting for one or two high probability moments per day. Trading is ultimately a waiting game, and waiting games are the hardest games you'll ever play as they go against our tendency to want things fast. Okay, uh, The machines know that. The market knows that. They know that most humans don't have the discipline because humans want things fast and the market's just like, ha, 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 I'll give you fast. It happens every single day. And if you understand how the game works, you can play the game. If you don't understand how the game works, the game plays you. So I wanted to, so ultimately I wanted a system where it would be easy to wait. Okay. I wanted it to be easy to wait because it's hard to wait. It's hard to wait. But if I know exactly where the outline of the sandbox is, then I just wait until price gets to the edge of the sandbox. That's it. And I can ignore everything else. And I can just do this on like five, five different markets, S&P, NASDAQ, Tesla, NVIDIA. And I don't need to watch anything else. Boom, done, easy peasy. So I want to isolate these high probability moments in time where I can put on a large trade for a short period of time and make solid cash. So I'm here to make money by exploiting what's working now not my preferred way. My preferred way would be to buy 200 contracts and not look at it for three weeks and make a lot of money. That's not really working as much as, you know, it's not, you know, that will work, but I need a weekly squeeze and all these things to happen. So, you know, how am I going to feed my zebras in between that? 
And what's working is taking the opposite side of the amateurs trading, amateurs trades in a systematic fashion. Okay. So I'm looking to be in and out the same day. I will hold overnight sometimes. Um, but usually I'm in a trade for a couple hours. I'm looking to make one to 3% on my trading balance per day. That means that's how much I risk. Obviously not every day a trade works, but if I'm patient and I wait for those high probability levels, it works out quite a bit. Um, I will occasionally hold low risk, high reward trades overnight, i.e. butterflies and things like that too. And I don't care what most stocks are doing. My most common answer right now in the trading room is someone's like, hey, JC, what's Verizon doing? I'm like, I don't know. And I don't care. Uh, if I have some time, I'll take a look at it. And typically it'll be at 3 ATR. And I'm like, why would you do anything with it here? Um, but, you know, this just so you guys know, um, because who cares? Like, you know, if you've got a system that's making money, who cares what's happening outside of that? So I'm looking at the S&P 500, SPX, SPY, ES, NASDAQ, NDX, QQQ, NQ. So what that just means is that an NDX, those are monsters. Those are hard to trade. But what that just means is simply like, okay, if I'm going to do something on an index, I might sell call credit spreads. Maybe I'll buy puts on SPY and maybe I'll just short the futures. You know, I got the, I got those different options and same thing here. And then, you know, give me four stocks, maybe six or seven of the leaders, you know, and, and yeah, you know what? There's going to be a day when I miss the move in Caterpillar. Oh, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll be fine. Like, you know, it's, 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 did you get, did you extract cash from the market? It doesn't matter how you did it you know, period end. That's why we want to have a plan. That's why we want to have a kind of a business plan. And if you got your cash, it doesn't matter if you did it in Tesla or you did it in Caterpillar or you did it in Verizon, you know, it doesn't matter. Did you, you know, did your, if you, if you run a Subway franchise and your goal is to sell $5,000 worth of sandwiches a day, you don't care if they bought ham and cheese uh, or, you know, roast beef on rye, just did it make $5,000 a day? And it's the same thing in trading. So everything else can go pound sand as, as, as a distraction uh, from me meeting my trading goals. And this is something that, you know, I've had to talk more about, you know, with just kind of the people in my life is eliminating distractions with audacity and ruthlessness from about 8 to 11 in the morning. I, you know, if I'm going to do this, I've got to be able to put trading first. And uh, do I want to know? There we go. Um, and, and, you know, like this is a great, this is a great quote here. Don't wake up in the same terrible place 10 years from now, just because you're terrified of what needs to be done today. So just, you know, do it today. So you're not in the same damn place 10 years from now. And I, you know, I always love stuff like that because, you know, things are going to keep staying the same unless you take drastic measures to get things lined up that help you meet your goals today. And if your main goal is to create income from the markets, then, Make sure your schedule is clear from a certain period of time during the day. Eliminate distractions. Get your charts up. Have a system there. And if you're busy, that's fine. But make have it simple enough that you can have an alert come and just scream at you and say, "Oh my God, I'm at L2. I, I gotta I gotta put this on." And obviously, that's great because if, you know if we are in meetings and stuff like that too, uh, with phones and stuff like that, it, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so basically, what this does is that. The, these quant pivots, they create a sandbox where even extreme movement is contained 96% of the time. So that's kind of the first thing that I like. Um, from there, it's, you know, how do you trade it? Now, typically, I will do directional trades on the futures. But as I said, man, credit spreads, they're just, they're very, very forgiving. And so I will, I'll, I'll do both. But, you know, typically, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm if I'm making some money on it, it's just credit spreads are more forgiving. There's pros and cons of futures and pros and cons of credit spreads, and sometimes it depends on the market as well. Um, one of the things I haven't talked about that the part of these quick hits tools includes importing a lot of key tools from higher time frames. So here's a five minute chart, and I've got an eight period EMA from the 15 minute chart, and a tw um, here, let me just write this. So this this yellow is an eight EMA from the 15 minute chart. And then this is a 21 EMA from the 30 minute chart. And they're overlaid on the five minute chart. So the reason I do all this is so I don't need to look at 21 different charts. I can look at this and say, okay, S&Ps are above that eight EMA on the 15 minute chart, which is actually above the 21 EMA on the 30 minute chart. And when I see something like that, I could buy calls and I can just hold on to it until it crosses back below the eight. 
that's what I mean when you when I talk about those big days, like this was a day where the S and P's just walked up like 50 points. That's how you write it. So that's kind of if there's a secret to that, you just write it until it falls through that ADMA, and that's that's why we've got those, and and uh, those can turn into some pretty big trades. Um, these are some of the other tools, and so we're gonna for those of you that don't have this stuff, I'm gonna show you kind of how to get it. But this is all. Um, it doesn't include these. A lot of people have these, um, but it's got everything else. But it's like so we're importing um, Keltner channels from the daily. Like so, right here I can see like here's the five EMA daily, the eight EMA daily, uh, the twenty one EMA daily. This is all on a thirty minute chart, and I can see the one ATR. Keltner channel from the daily and the two ATR. So I can just see all this on one chart. It helps me make these decisions as, um, you know, so I'll, I'll have one set of charts like this that's got all these different things uh, that are imported in. And then I'll look at, I'm just going to go back here a little bit. Um, and then this. So those are the two. And then so I've got one that's just got all the, just the quant pivots and the quick hits. So I can just see the levels. Um, and then I'll do it where I've got uh, the multiple, uh, which, you know, uh, there we go. I just kind of look at that just to kind of see where are things flowing? You know, where are we in relation to larger time frames? And of the two, I think the other one's more important, but this is one where I just kind of got to go, okay, process check. You know, are we, you know, are we trending higher? Uh, is the 8 EMA 15 above the 21? Okay, great. So we're, you know, we're kind of in an uptrend here and, uh, you know, all that kind of fun, all the, all those things, which is great. So um, the accounts I'm setting up for this is, of course, I, I do have the personal seven-figure account where that's my goal where I want to make X, you know, one to three percent a day. I can go feed the zebras, and you know they'll be happy with me. And what I've been doing with this, and I've been experimenting with this because I think I thought this was overkill, but I've been doing a daily ACH. You know, if the goal is X amount a day, it's like okay, I'm going to wire that out every day, whether I make it or not. And so what happens is like okay, so if your goal is you know, uh, let's just say it's one K a day. And you make 2K, great. Well, on that trade, you you know the daily the daily thing is out, and maybe your account grows uh, by another thousand. But what's interesting about this, because I've done weekly wire, monthly wires, and weekly wires, the daily wire really, really dials in the fact that you know if you made your daily nut on that first trade, why in God's name are you going to risk that on another trade? Like just ACH it out right then. Then all of a sudden, the whole trading game changes, and it's like, wow, my job is just to extract cash. My job isn't to touch all the water. It's just to extract cash. And if I'm able to do that early in the day, good for me. Let's stop. In the gold room, I will set up a 100K account where I'll do these trades. And I'll post those, you know, the position sizes I'm using. And we'll also do what I call the regular stuff in there, too. But that way, you just kind of get a sense of, um, you know, position sizing and, and stuff like that, too. And look, this is the same stuff I teach my kids. Uh, Dylan, he's very proficient at this. He just likes to look at those little arrows and those levels. And um, he he has made over the years, I, I think, something like $6,000 that he's put into Robux. And he's built his own worlds. He's got his own games on there that he makes money from. Um, it's been fun to watch. Uh, Avery, same thing. She saved up enough money to buy her cousin a computer. Um, she'll kind of come in and do that. And they, they gravitated towards it pretty early. So anyway, my oldest was always like, you know, and he's very athletic, doesn't want to, you know, he's, he's uh, more outdoors, but finally he's like, okay, I just want to, I want to make a hundred bucks a day. Um, and that's what really motivated me to kind of create that quick hits program. And in fact, I've learned from trying to figure out how to help him. I learned a lot in terms of like, wow, He's just trying to make hundred bucks a day. He's not trying to touch all the water. Then that kind of really got me interested and excited at that as well. So, so all these tools have made my trading life a lot easier, but also combined essentially with this new kind of a trading plan and the way I'm looking at the markets has made things a lot easier and more fun. Uh, I've been trading more in the morning when the moves are happening, which I can post in the room. And then at the end of the day, if there's something fun to do in the close, can absolutely look at it in terms of asymmetrical risk. The setups are very clear. I can sell same day expiration credit spreads on SPX and take a lot less risk than a directional trade while making the same potential profit. And I can focus on hitting monetary goals each day instead of sitting through four days of swing moves. So, so on a swing trade, of course, we could be up four days in a row and then on day five, you know, you're destroyed. And I'm just not in the mood for that right now. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? I want to get my daily cash and grab it and go do something else. And so that's kind of, you know, kind of motivating all that too.
So a couple of quotes from one of my trading mentors. Traders are not born with the patience gene. They have to learn it mostly through brutal lessons. Trading is merely a game of the patient taking money from the impatient. And what I love about this is that even though it's a short-term system, it forces patience. Like it's so clear when to take a trade that you don't do it. You'd feel foolish doing something when it's not set up. And sometimes, and that actually works for me. I have a trainer and then a yoga teacher. They just come to our house. And the reason is that some days I can easily talk myself out of driving to the gym. I can easily talk myself out of driving to the yoga studio. But when the instructors are there in the garage waiting, the shame of my, you know, knowing that they're there, and I'm not showing up, the shame of that overrides anything that I might be going like, eh, I don't feel like working out. So I'm really good with shame motivation, shame-based motivation. And so I like this as well. It's like, I get ashamed if I, you know, get into a trade too early because this is so obvious. Like, just follow the damn trade sign. So finding the right balance of patience and determination. And uh, determination, patience, and courage are the only things needed to improve any situation. So I say, like, in trading, this is one of my favorite things I've ever heard is, like, you know, your only job in trading is to get an equity curve that starts at the lower left of your screen and goes to the upper right. That means you don't need to focus on being right. You don't need to know what the current geo geopolitical situation is. Uh, you don't need to know anything. You just need to have an equity curve that goes from here to here. And that's it. That's your only job as a trader. And it makes things so simple. And I love this. I had a mentor that said this to me once. If you have to talk to more than three people about the same problem, you don't want help. You want attention. And so I would just encourage everyone that if this, you know, if trading's frustrating and you're asking all these, you know, all these questions about it and stuff like that too, uh, you know, if you really want help, this is a system that can help. And if you don't want help, um, do you just want attention? And I've I've noticed that with some, you know, you talk to people where you're hearing the same, like, is this the same crap I heard, you know, like last year and the year before and the year before, and they're still talking about it. They just want attention. They don't want help. And 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 if you're a friend, you'll call them out on it and you'll help them with it. And that's it's just you know, it's just it's just human nature and all that kind of fun stuff. So the secret is to be able to go with the flow of what is happening, not with what you think might or should happen. And to understand what is happening, we have to understand how the algos and the machines look at the market. And now we essentially have a map. You know, they've they've sandboxed price for certain periods of time and we can now see it. And we know we can look, we can run the statistics on the probabilities of that market on that time frame. So we have all the information at our fingertips. And it's also important to control the emotions of fear and greed, which always cause people to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. This is why I'm a huge fan of doing the daily ACH. What's nice about ACH too is you know you don't get charged any fees. Um, you know if you do it by one o'clock, it appears in your bank account the next day. There's something very powerful in that. This is not a video game. You know, this is not something where it's like, oh, you know, I'm just going to see where I am at the end of the year. And um, there's that one trade that blows up half your account. No, this is get the money, get the money. Um, and it just takes the emotion out of it. You know, you're flowing with the river instead of swimming against it. All right. I'm going to stick around here and answer some questions, but let me just sh show you a couple things here. Now, if you've never seen any of this stuff, okay, quick hits, we released those like two years ago, uh, quant pivots like two and a half years ago or something like that. If you've never seen those, they're game changers. I highly encourage you to invest in your trading trading future uh, and getting those. Um, if you've already got them, uh, I'm going to do a class, uh, just how I'm combining them. So obviously you don't need the tools again, right? So let's talk about all this. So I'm going to be doing a class coming up next Saturday, uh, September 23rd. It'll be from 12 to 4 Central. And I'm essentially going to talk about how uh, we're going to dial in to the quick hits and quant pivots, uh, how they work, and more importantly, my trading plan and exactly what I'm doing and how I'm using them together. And then from there on Thursday, September 28th, and then again on Thursday, September, October 12th, because I, I always like to like do a class, give people time to do it on their own. Of course, I'll be in the gold room doing these trades. So if you're in the gold room, we can talk about it. Um, and then we'll come back again and, and we'll do it again. And um, and, and, you know, we'll just do it live. And I always say, like, the class is great. And with the class, of course, you know, you get the tools. Um, and then the live trading is like, look, you get, you know, you can read a book on how to play golf, but that's not going to help you play golf. You know, you'll, but to, to learn how to play golf, you got to go swing the club. And so the live trading is about, is about swinging the club. 
Um, all right. So this is a little different because we've got a couple of different indicators happening here. So you got to see, you see a lot of X's and check and uh, checks, right? So if you don't have the quant pivots and you don't have quick hits, then I would just, so the quant pivots, uh, that's 897. The quick hits is 1197, but we are doing a special. If you get both, it's only like, uh, what is that? $50 more or something like that. So it's obviously a huge savings if you get both. Um, so if you don't have, that's, that's, you know, the, the way to go, uh, the summit package, I'll talk about that, but that includes the ticket to our Orlando event. So we're going to do a live event in Orlando at the end of October. And for those of you that are down for it, that's a, you know, that's kind of a way to get there, get it at, uh, you know, it's, it, then you get kind of get a discount on everything. All right. So let's back up here. Let's say you have quick hits. What do you do? Well, you get the quant pivots package. It's 897. You get the quant pivots indicator, and then you'll be, um, Join me with the sandbox strategy class where I'm going to talk about how to how I'm using quant pivots and quick hits, um, quant pivots and quick hits uh, together. Now, if you've already got quick hits and you don't have quant pivots, or, and vice versa, right? Remember, I'm sick, so <laughs> uh, if you've already got quant pivots, you don't have quick hits, get the quick hits, and then um, you know, and you also get a couple of things in here like uh, you know, the quick hits has a lot of stuff. There's three different versions of quick hits. There is the uh, moving averages from multiple time frames, Keltner channels from multiple time frames. Uh, the quick hits has a lot of cool stuff, and um, so if you don't have that, I highly encourage it. And then, of course, if you don't have any of this, Elite Package. Okay, um, that's a very long that's a very long um, URL to type in. So you could type that in, or you should be able to also to see. I think we're, we'll push, push something there to you. Um, let me go through these real quick and I'll answer questions. So the elite package, basically you get everything, uh, and the two days of live trading. So I, I don't think I mentioned that. So, um, you get all the tools, all the things, strategy class, and then also the two days of live trading. So to me, this is the obvious, you know, the obvious one. Now, if you've got quant pivots and you've got quick hits and you're like, well, I already got them and you want to do the live trading, um, there is, um, I don't think we have a link for it, but you know, obviously you already got the tools. So um, you can call or email and there'll be a slide on that as well. Okay. So that's the elite package. I get, that's just everything. Um, we talked about that. That looks great. Um, the summit package is really cool just because you're going to get everything. Plus we're going to go to Orlando and um, we're going to have a, uh, there's going to be a poker night, which is fun. That's a really good way to learn money management. I got that. I learned that from Henry. He's like, you don't, you play Texas Hold'em? I'm like, not really. He's like, oh man. And that's kind of why Henry adapt, adapted to trading really quickly because he was already a, a, a pretty solid poker paper, a, a poker player. And so that's always fun. And, and live events, you know, it's like, okay, well, what's the difference between a live event and online? The live event is nice because you are consciously making a decision to step out of your busy life and be with traders, you know, for a, this, in this case, about 24 hours. And I always find in, in an event like that, you just by osmosis, you know, things just start happening. You just, you learn, you get more revelations and aha moments and like in 24 hours of just talking about trading outside of your current responsibilities and hanging out with other traders, then, you know, you're sitting in front of your computer and you got, you know, oh my God, the, somebody's knocking on the door and all these things are happening. And so getting out of your environment is actually a pretty uh, cool thing. Plus, you know, we get to all hang out together and, and that's fun too. Okay, so let me see uh, what questions are coming up. So is the is the live event one day? Yeah, so it's a one. It's an evening. So it's the night before. We kind of have the. I think it's the poker and cocktail reception the night before, or maybe one of them is the same night. And then uh, we'll have a, just kind of a one day, uh, you know, kind of going over strategies and, and answering questions and, and things like that too. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, all right, so let me look at the answer. Publish priority questions. Um, does the sandbox use volume? Okay. So that's a great question. It does not. It's based on price ranges. Um, but, um, obviously volume, you know, if one of the things, especially if I'm looking at the futures, cause of course SPX won't have volume, right. But on the futures, I like to look at the volume and, you know, if there's a really strong market on high volume, I might wait for that volume to kind of drop off a little bit. But of course, if it, you know, you get that rally into H2 on no volume, oh my gosh, you know, sell that all day long. And uh, so that's certainly, you know, certainly a nice thing to add on there as well. 
what are the 20x labels telling us? Okay, good question. Um, so let me show you. So this, we joked about this because when we first did this, we called it the don't be a dumbass indicator. So um, so what does that mean, right? So let's, uh, on uh, the 20 minute. So here it is. Okay, so what, is, what does this mean? Okay, and we used to literally call this don't be a dumbass. So Microsoft, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. And then you get this 20X. That just means that the 20 minute, so this is the five minute chart, right? But the 20 minute oscillator is crossed back above zero. So at this point, that's a not only a strong buy signal, it's typically a very strong trend change. But if you're short, don't be a dumbass, like get out. Um, so that's that's kind of what we you know did that way. And you know, same thing here. And if you're long, you know, oh, I'm long Microsoft, it's going to the moon, and you get the 20x thing, you know, you get the turn, get out. Like, don't be a dumbass. You know, this thing fell, you know, 10 points. Uh, so that's we really like that because it's kind of a wake up. And and so what we do on this is then we'll have it on there. And then for larger time frames, um, you know, the, the two hour one is kind of nice, especially for the indexes, because you're kind of looking at, you know, some of the bigger shifts and stuff like that, too, where, you know, things might bottom out and stuff like that. So, again, it's just kind of like, a, OK, you know, we're crossing here. Man, we're just going up and up and up. And, you know, Microsoft goes up 30 points. So you just don't want to you just don't want to fight that. That's the that's the whole uh, the whole idea with that. You know, no reason to fight it. And if we're looking at current markets here, you know, people ask like, oh, does this work on other other markets and things like that? And, you know, kind of whatever you trade, um, you know, we get a lot of questions on on crude oil. And you can see today it came down to L2. Magically, it bounced, right? Um, even here, it came down pretty hard on a number this morning, but it got back up there by the time uh, by the time that sandbox closed. And so just things like that or um, you know, of course, you know, we all like to look at Apple and Tesla and stuff like that too. And so it just kind of helps give, you know, a frame of reference and, uh, let's see, let's zoom in on today's So These are the daily ones, right? And so you can see like yesterday or yesterday it came down hard in the L2, it bounced. And then that's where it closed. Like it couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't stay below that. And so it's just things like that on these extreme moves that I, I think are pretty, are pretty handy. Um, are these levels based on floor trader pivots? So they're not, no, they're not. Now, and I'm a fan of floor trader pivots and these are more dynamic and you'll notice here, like in the two hour one, that literally looks back, you know, and you can change it, but it looks back 30 days at all the price action. And based on that, it says, okay, you know what? We're going to give a little bit more room to the downside here than we are to the upside based on the price action of this particular. So, so they're, they're dynamic and they, they're different for everything. And so that's the thing I like about them is they up, essentially update kind of dynamically like that. Uh, John, how are the lines around the sandbox different than the voodoo lines? Okay, good question. So let's add the voodoo lines, why don't we? So I'm gonna come over here, maximize the cell, studies, edit studies. I gotta add the voodoo lines. Uh, we want the big ones, the big mama jambas. Oh, maybe it's... um. Uh, da, 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 voodoo. There we go. Okay, so here's Apple, and we got the voodoo lines, right? So first of all, let's come back here and let me let me remove um, my horizontal lines that I had on here, and let's do SPX. Okay, so so what's the difference here? So what you can see here is that the voodoo lines, which I always want to know where the voodoo lines are. So boom, here is a snow line. Here's a skyline. Here's a skyline. Here's a snow line. Okay, they're the same. They are there no matter what's happening. Now, the these define the sandbox of that particular day. Okay, this is the sandbox of that particular day. There happens to be a voodoo line there. Here's the sandbox of that particular day, okay? So one thing is I'll know on days like this that, all right, um, you know, you kind of see where, where things are contained. And then here you can see as Apple got a kind of, as is rallying here, the sandbox for this day changes, okay? And now we've got this voodoo line here. Does that make sense? So the sandbox is giving you essentially, here's the, you know, basically here's the likelihood, the high probability where price will be contained today. Now, the fact that there's also a voodoo line here, that's great. 
But there's certainly be a lot of times where you know the sand, you know, the sandbox is in between the voodoo lines. Does that make sense? So, so every day, every single day, you're going to get a sandbox that is adjusted uh, for the price for that day, whereas the voodoo lines will stay static. So. I want to know where the voodoo lines are, but at the same time, I want to know statistically where range is likely to get to be contained on that particular day. So if we look at, say, NDX. So there's all the voodoo lines, and then, boom, there's the sandbox. So I can look at this and just say, like, all right, uh, I know, and remember, the sandbox is the first two, right? So I know that today... We're going to stay contained. High probability we're going to be contained in this box. By the way, inside that box, there's a snow line, and then you know, and there's then there's a level here. Um, if we come back over, where was the one I was going to look at here? I love it when like there's a voodoo line and an L1 together, and that's that's then I'll go definitely you know go like max size on something like that, which is great. And then there's going to be some days where it's just like you know voodoo line here just isn't even in play. You know, there's no the sandbox. You know, we're just staying in the sandbox. We're just staying in the sandbox. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. I, I like both of them. I want to see where, what both are doing for sure. Um, will John show his settings for his quant pivots? I haven't had to figure out. Yes. So Michelle, um, that's it. it uh, yeah. The short answer is yes. And if you've already got them, I can, I'll post them. Um, it's, I think the easiest way to do that, I'll, I'll talk with Lorna and I can just, you know, cause it'll take a minute to jot, jot it all down, but just to make sure that, you know, you've got everything. If you want them to look like that, just make sure that you've got all the, you know, all the things turned on that I have turned on and stuff like that too. Um, is it only good on like the five minute chart and the 30 minute chart or can we also use it on the daily chart? Yeah. Great question. So on the daily chart, so here's the SPX on the daily chart. Now, these quant pivots are the monthly, okay? I want to know where these are because this essentially is the sandbox for the entire month, okay? Why is that important? Well, if you come back here on some of these ex more extreme moves, um, you know, this is where this is where the world was falling apart. This is the fast, uh, second fastest drop in the S&Ps in history. What happened when we got to monthly L2? We stopped and we reversed. Why? Because the amount of time that we close below L2 on the monthly chart is only 4.9%. So even though these don't come into play very much, uh, I want to know where we are. So right now on the SPX, you know, we kind of had this little drift uh, basically from H1 over here uh, down into the next month to L1. That's very common. That's very common. And so I'm looking at this going like, well, if we fall, man. Look at this right here at 4337. That's a potential target. Or, you know, whatever stock you're you're looking at or you want to trade, this gives you a little bit of bigger picture. You know, I, I like Nvidia here on the long side. Why? Well, we're down here at L1. Um, the odds, you know, of it of L1 holding, okay. I mean, they're not as great as down here, of course, uh, but they're not bad. So the odds, you know, the time is it's gonna close below L1 is only 15.4% of the time. So guess what? I'm long NVIDIA here. I got options that expire Friday. Now that I'm seeing this, I'm probably going to buy some options for, uh, you know, for next month as well with the idea that we could at least hold this for a little bit of while. Or guess what? We could sell put credit spreads there. So I found that that's, you know, when we're talking about like swing trades and stuff like that, that's that's been super useful. So so in, so that's the monthly. You could change that to the weekly. So if you want to see what the weekly sandbox look like, you can come over here. Um, blah, 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 quant pivots. And let's change that to weekly. And um, yes, yes, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to shorten up. And now, so they're a little tighter, right? Because it's so just it's just the week. But now you can see like, okay, you know, for the week, last week we came down into weekly L2. And guess what it held? Because you're only going to close below that 8% of the time. And you can see this, you know, right now we're stuck, but, you know, essentially L1 is support. Uh, for this week. So I like looking at these bigger levels like that because, you know, it does, you know, it th that's the machines are paying attention, you know, and that for lack of a better word. Um, when are the lines being populated? Yeah, so they're, they happen. Um, let me see. Let me put this on the futures and see if they're on the shorter term ones. So, um, so on the 30 minute, I've got the daily quants. And so you can see that 
uh, we've got, you know, we've already got the levels that are established for tomorrow because the futures are trading. The SPX won't be until the open. Um, on here, I've got the two hours. So basically every two hours, um, it sets up the new ones. And so here at, you know, whatever time this was, it must have been, um, what, 8.30, I think. So, um, you know, so every two hours, it just sets up the new one. And then here every 30 minutes. So, and then as soon, as soon as the bar closes, um, as soon as the bar closes here, boom, then the, then the levels for the next two hours are established. Um, are Fibonacci levels used in this process? So they are not part of the calculations. Um, I'm a huge fan of Fibonacci, especially extensions. Uh, but there's no uh, Fibonacci calculations that are utilized. So it's more, it's based on actual, actual price. Yeah, good question. Um, good question, RJ. For future, should you look at the levels using overnight data or just RTH, which I think you mean, which is, which I'm assuming means real time or ca the cash session. So what I do is I look at the futures with overnight um, and then I'll also look at SPX because SPX, of course, is just the cash session. So I'll look at both. And um, I really like the SPX. Uh, I really and I really like those levels because overnight can be kind of weird, you know, but um, that's so that's what I do. I just look at the SPX and the ES uh, for stuff like that. Uh, does it work better with markets that have higher liquidity? That's a good question. What's a let's look at a low liquidity stock here. Well, yeah, let's look at a low liquidity stock like uh, Chipotle's. Of course, you know, you're going to get some weird stuff here, right? So let's zoom. So this is daily, right? So Chipotle's low liquidity stock. Um, here, let me maximize this and we can look at it. Uh, it's got voodoo lines in there too. But if we're looking at this, then it's like, okay, well, here's Chipotle. So, you know, Here's the sandbox for that day. Um, where's the, you know, here's the sandbox for that day. It held. Here's the sandbox. So, so the nice thing is, even though it's low liquidity, what this is doing is going back and measuring actual price. And so, you know, the levels are based on essentially actionable intelligence. And so even on a low, uh, and I'm glad you asked that question because it's like, I haven't spent a lot of time looking at that, but that's, you know, in terms of, if you want a fun stock to play, uh, buying calls on CMG at nineteen hundred dollars and flipping them out at nineteen hundred and forty dollars, you know, you can make a living doing that. So um, yeah, that's that's one thing I like about it. It is just based on you know, it's just based on actual price. Um, there you go. Um, oh God, good question. Are the quant pivots dynamically changing, or are they fixed for those two hours? They're absolutely fixed for those two hours. Yeah. So the next two hours will adjust, but it doesn't, it does not adjust. Um, and, I'm, and I'm, and I'm glad that they don't, I think that would be tough, but once they're there, they're there. So essentially, you know, what happens is that, you know, like, right, like here. Okay. So at uh, whatever time this was uh, today, it must've been like 1230, I think, whatever um, we had the new levels and then these levels were locked in place until and there's always this weird, you know, at, at 2.30, you get 30 minutes because then the market closes. So 12.30 to 2.30, these levels stay the same. So they don't like move or adjust or anything like that. And then you don't have to keep these on. Like if you want to clean it up, you can only have these on and get rid of these. Uh, I kind of like to look at the past though, just to see like, okay, yeah, did it hold and, and stuff like that too. Uh, what else? Are you use, using market profile for the sandbox? So no, uh, I, I'm a fan of market profile, but this isn't, it's not market profile. Um, it's just, it's based more on, you know, the ranges essentially where the algorithms will step in and take action. From YouTube, are sandboxes similar to standard deviations? Similar, but okay, that's a good question. So there's, it's yes and no. So if we're looking at this, this is this sandbox is price dynamic. The extremes are standard deviation based. So there's two things happening here. 
the inner level, that's the sandbox based purely on price dynamics. And then you've got a one standard deviation move beyond that. Does that make sense? So yeah, so that's how that's how they work there. Mm. Okay, good question. So does this mean that you're still are you using the squeeze? So I'm at so I always say I can't look at a chart without the squeeze. Um so you here's that here's that chart there. Sometimes I'll have it on there, but I have it on um so this other chart here where it's the same, you know, we're looking at the SPX. So I want to know like, all right, on the 30 minute chart, you know, do we have a squeeze? Yes. So I'm absolutely so I've got I don't I don't want to get it too crowded. So I've got this pretty clean in terms of the quant pivots. And then, you know, of course, I got six monitors right next to it. I'm like, OK, what's the squeeze doing now? What's great about this? And for those of you that are familiar with the squeeze, of course, is that the squeeze, let me uh, squeeze that there, is that when we look at this and we look at one that's here. Well, this is actually an easier way to do it. Um, let's look at because the squeeze oftentimes will push it into, uh, guess what, one of those levels. And so if I could spell right, that would be even better. ST squeeze pro. Uh, let's add that in there. And so um, let's take a look at this. And so there's a couple of, one of the things that I like about this is that, um, you know, this black background is a little hard to see the squeeze. Let's go here to appearance real quick. Hopefully this doesn't destroy everything. Okay, that makes it a little harder to see. Let's try. Let me try one more here. Appearance, background, dark gray. Boom, boom. Oh, cursor. There, we'll make it a blue cursor. Okay, so if you look at something like this, then, and say, okay, well, where? I'm just gonna blow up the squeeze here, so we can kind of get a sense of and look at it. So you know, like right here, it's like, okay, gosh, the squeeze is firing to the downside, right? Well, look where price stops, uh, L2. So that's one of the things I found is a pretty awesome dynamic is that, you know, oh, you know, the squeeze will uh, kind of stop at those extreme levels. And so it's actually, they're, if you're using the squeeze, uh, they're great targets uh, as well. And so even if you're looking at, um, what was it? We were looking at one in NVIDIA setting up trying to get one going here. The squeeze is trying to get something going. You can see today um, in NVIDIA that, you know, we, we couldn't, we got up to like H, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't get past, you know, couldn't get past that, right? Um, the squeeze to the downside, it terminated at L2. This happens all the time. Um, this squeeze here was pretty powerful and, you know, it just kept on going and going. And, and this is one of the few times I've seen it blow through. Remember only like, 7% of the time, but it actually did push it through there. But a lot of times if I see a squeeze and we get up to there, I'll certainly take some profits. Um, and so I, I found that that's been a, it's a, been a, a good dynamic as well. So they, they, yeah, they actually work well together that way. Um, if price hits L2, H2 towards the end of the day of the two hour sandbox, does that change whether or not you would take the trade? Paul, that's a really good question. Um, the biggest challenge at the end of the day is that, you know, if you're going to sell a credit spread is there's no premium, right? So, but if it's towards the end of the day like that, I don't mind like say buying a cheap kind of a, maybe slightly out of the money called like a debit spread. Let's say it's L2 and, you know, maybe you can buy a, you know, $5 wide SPX slightly out of the money for 50 cents. Okay, fine. You know, let's do that. Um, or if you're doing like say the futures, but I'm certainly I'm certainly more comfortable at the beginning of the day because I think the price action in the first three hours is a little more like I, I, predictable is not the right word, but it, you kind of have this ebb and flow because there's plenty of volume. At the end of the day, it's kind of like you know that's the drunk uncles kind of coming in, and you're like, okay, was he going to knock everything over? Um, what's he going to do? So towards the end of the day, my risk my risk for trades at the end of the day is like a 10th of what it would be at the beginning of the day. So the beginning of the day, you know, I might put on like, okay, I'm going to put on a hundred lot, $20 wide for five bucks. So I got $15 at risk on a hundred lot, right? I would never, I would never do that in the last 30 minutes. You know, I'm going to be looking, let me buy an asymmetrical butterfly uh, or something like that. So uh, it's a great, great question. Um, if you didn't want to do a spread, would you buy 
um, at the money and out of the money. Okay, so I'm I'm not against calls and puts. There's obviously benefits, right, to doing doing a spread. Um, but one of the things, and this is great about the SPX, is that the SPX, uh, you know, the at the monies or even the slightly money. Let's call it delta forties. Um, and the first, especially the first two hours, they hold on to their premium pretty well. Like if you're going to lose money, it's because it moves against you directionally. If it's trading sideways, you're okay. You're like, you're the theta decay doesn't really kick in. So I'm not actually against that. Um, and if you do, especially, you know, if you buy Delta 40 near the beginning of the day, if the S and P's move like 15 points to 20 points, your options doubled. And so I actually like that. The, the downside is, of course, is that, you know, it's just, you know, if you're just chopping, chopping, chop away, chopping, it's going to eat out, eat away. Uh, but I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Um, just you just want to be careful where in, a couple things you want to be careful with. OK, so let's say that you're at L2, right? What's happening today is the market rallies are H2. The market rallies H2. And that's where people are buying Delta 40s. They're getting their their heads handed to them. But if we come up to H2 and you buy some Delta 40 puts, now you're on the right side. OK, or if we come down to L2, um, you know, a lot of times it comes down there and people buy out of the money puts thinking it's going to keep going. If you buy some out of the money calls there, you're in the right. Now you're in the right side of it. So I'm not against it. And in fact, I will do it sometimes. And um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm at the end of the day, you you know, you're you're screwed if it's not right right away. The first two, three hours, you know, you got um, you're, you're not going to get that much premium decay against you. So, yeah, that, that's not bad. Um, John, can't we ex can't we track extreme with two to three ATR levels? Yes. So on the, if you're looking at the daily charts though, we hit three ATR like rarely. Um, we hit two ATR, you know, rarely the, so um, what you're talking about is, is essentially average true range away from the 21 EMA. And I'm a huge fan of that. And I keep track of it. What we're looking at here with the quant pivots is not the average true range. It's, what is the sand essentially the sandbox is the best way I can think of it. What what is what is price containment for today? Now, like NVIDIA, price containment, you know, there may be a, you know, uh like right now, I know on NVIDIA we're near, in fact, let me just find it. You know, we're near the 21 EMA, right? And so if I come over here on NVIDIA and say, okay, well, here's NVIDIA, here's the 21 period moving average, here's plus one ATR, here's plus two ATR. Yeah, you know what, at plus two ATR, that's probably a level where you wanna take profits and get short, but that was one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days ago. Um, when is it gonna get there again? I don't know, you know? Uh, so, so what we're talking about here is uh, something like, okay, every day we've got levels where uh, the algos will step in. Does that make sense? So I love, that's a great question. And it's kind of like, you know, when I look at it, ATRs, um, so anyway, hopefully, hopefully that, it, I'm not sure if that answered your question or not, but that's, because I've looked at that too. And I've just found that for whatever reason, um, these level, you know, and, and there, here's the other thing about the ATR levels. Okay. You'll notice that these levels, they are straight. They don't move. Um, ATRs change. Um, so like, uh, you know, here's, you know, here's the ATR, right? Well, right here, three ATR is at, you know, 403. Well, it just keeps falling, you know, it just, so it'll change and adjust itself, you know, based on the market action, right? Whereas these levels, they're fixed, you know, for those two hours, that's the sandbox. It ain't changing. And then the next two hours, that's the sandbox and it's not changing. So I'm a huge fan of ATR, but I love these levels because they define what's happening at this moment in time. Uh, do you have any thoughts on growing an account that's only $1,000? But yeah, you know, look, Jonah, I always say like, look, it's it's harder to grow an account that's $1,000 uh, than say like, you know, $20,000. But trading is simply a skill set. So if you think of it as that's your opportunity to cut your teeth, then awesome. So on a $1,000 account, what I would encourage is if you're looking at something like this, you trade SPY. And don't you don't need to mess around with a lot of other stuff because it's easy to get kind of sucked in. So if we go to SPY, you know, the thousand dollars, you could trade like one contract. Um, you could trade two contracts. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not, uh, 
you know, especially if you're doing spreads. And, you know, same thing here. It's like, okay, well, geez, we came down to 445. Um, you know, let's, you know, we got a little, you know, we got a, it's a one point bounce into the close. That's like 10 points on the SPX. And it's the same thing. It's just the whole discipline piece. Like, oh, we came down here. Okay, great. Um, we're at 445. You know, let's say we buy a call or something like that and we go to 447. Awesome. Okay. So it's the same thing. And it just, and again, it's the discipline. It's just not trying to overtrade. It's being patient. And trading is a skill set. And once you learn the skill of trading, you know, that then the money comes. Um, it's the, you know, but learn the skill first, you know, you don't have to try too hard at the consider, you know, everybody talks about, oh my God, interest rates are at 5%. That's amazing. That's a year. You know, think about, you know, if you have a thousand dollar account and you're just grinding this out and that's 5% a week, right? That, that really can accelerate. Um, you don't have to try to make any big, crazy trades or anything like that. And the advantage, and the reason head funds don't, can't do that is they don't have the liquidity as small traders you've got the advantage of liquidity. So you can have outsized returns as long as you've got an approach and you've got the discipline. Um, let's see. How do you determine when to take losses if a trade goes against you? Okay, great. So same thing. And again, it's just defined by, it's defined by the levels, right? So let's say that, let's find, let me find a, where we failed here. Okay, so right here, this is scary. So, you know, you, let's say that you come up here and you're like, okay, I'm going to sell calls and it just explodes against you. Now it only explodes against you by 50 cents. So maybe you're like, oh God, do I, but that's, that's the part where they're kind of the rubber meets the road. I mean, that one wouldn't have stopped out because, you know, that's, you know, you're going to give it a little bit of room and it came down pretty quickly, but you've got a guide, a guiding light there. And so let me try to, I'm trying to find one where it failed because it does, again, it does fail 8% of the time um, right here. So so let's say now, now I found that if there is going to be a failure in the first two hours, it's typically on a day where you get a big gap down. That's kind of where things can get scary. So let's say you get down here and you sell put credit spread and man, it's still going right. And it just doesn't work. And so here, you know, you did this at, at four, let's call it 447. We're down here at 445. And at that point, typically I, it's very rare that you're going to be able to come back. And so I'll say when I, when I see those next levels, I'll just close it out and then, okay, what's the next trade? So, and, and again, about 8% of the time that's going to happen. And that's fine. As long as, you know, you know, you've got your position size dialed in and stuff like that too. Now you can see that the next test held, right? But um, I, I, days like the hardest days to me, it's like you gap down and you get what's called a walk down because um, you just, you know, is, is this thing going to like just keep on going? So there are things that we look at to help with that, you know, things like the internals and things like that too. But most of the time, you know, most of the time that's not what's going to happen, but you know, a big gap down day and it's just ugly, ugly, ugly. Uh, but that's what that looks like. So the nice thing though, is that, um, you know, if it's like this, you're not adding to it, you know, the next, when the next, by the time the next thing happens, if you haven't, you know, if you're still underwater, you just close it. And so that's the guy. And that's the guideline. Uh, la, la, la. Can you clarify how this is different from the quick hits class you did last time? Okay, yeah. So quick hits last time was really more based on uh, kind of utilizing the movement of, hold on. I'm going to take a hit of my day quill here. So a lot of the last quick hits class, and I, and I still look at the stuff, but it wasn't with the benefit of the quant pivots. So it was like, okay, we're rolling, we're rolling. And then let's see if we can get, you know, typically about 0.75% away from the EMA. And then let's see if we can kind of come back up. I still, I'm still interested in that. I want to see what's kind of going on. I've just found that when you combine this, you know, the arrows and all this kind of stuff, specifically with the quant pivots, it just got a lot easier. You know, there's, you know, there's less wondering there's less you know looking at the charts and stuff like that too it's just you know it's just super clean and that's what cody and i were looking at this the other day he's like this is just so clean so i'm gonna this is my main chart and then off to the side i'm gonna like okay well what is you know what's happening over here but you know it's like okay we're at the level great you know let's let's work let's work with the level and the you know, levels by themselves are great but then what's great about the quick hits here you know like this is a good example is, you know, we're here, we're here, we're here. We can see all the quick hits just continue to erode, right? And so when you start to see like, oh man, we're crossing, you know, we're crossing. Yeah, great. Let's let's look at a short trade down to 
essentially looking for H1 as a first target or L1 as a first target, L2 as a second target. So it's just, yeah, you're just getting a lot, a lot of, a lot of qu quantifies a lot. Um, aren't futures easier to risk manage with a better risk reward than credit spreads? Thoughts? I'm a huge fan of futures. Yeah, Alberto. So if you're familiar with futures, I do this with futures as well. NASDAQ futures um, and ES futures. So, I mean, I do both. Sometimes I'll just do the futures, just depending on kind of my mood of the day. Um, the answer is yes. I'm a huge fan because, you know, there's no premium decay. I love shorting futures. If I, you know, buying futures, I would rather probably just buy, go with SPX options because, you know, I don't want to buy futures and it turns into a walk down day kind of a thing. But I love shorting futures at L at uh, H2. It's a joy. Just, you know, watching that roll over in death. It's a, uh, you know, brings joy to the soul. Um, is quick hits a better strategy for small accounts or the sandbox strategy? Well, um, I guess, you know, I guess the, the idea with this is that this, so the sandbox strategy, which is just, you know, those pivot levels, um, it's fine by itself. The quick hits is nice because you get that additional like, uh, confirmation kind of with the arrows. So I would say like, if you can do the combine, the systems is the best choice. Um, otherwise, otherwise if you're trying to like, okay, which one do I do? And you don't have either one of them, but the quant pivots is the easy one. That's just, it's just the simplest one. And then the quick hits just kind of brings in, you know, the extra, like, uh, you know, the momentum and like part of it, like you'll notice here, the bars. So I have the bars, you can color code these bars, the same price in this case as the 10 minute momentum. So when I see these red bars that are red, I know that the 10 minute momentum is red. And when I see that they're green, I know that the 10 minute momentum has changed. So with the quick hits, you can kind of do these things that, you know, just kind of help, you know, they always just, just anything like that, just to help a little bit. No, oh, I say follow the pretty colors. Don't fight it too much. Um, hey, John, can this be done with 1.5 hours a day? Maybe less ambitious. Yeah, so Julian, it's a good question. So and, and it, so the answer to that question is it depends what 1.5 hours you're talking about. If it's the opening one and a half hours, that would be the best time to do it. Um, if it's the last one and a half hours, it's not as easy. So, you know, the answer is yes. Um, and I think if you can do the opening one and a half hours, it gives you an edge because during you know, the middle of the day is kind of like, eh, not, you know, a lot of times not much is happening. Um, during the class, I'm going to talk about other strategies to do during the middle of the day. Like, you know, you put on an iron condor, you put it on an iron fly, you know, there's, there's different things like that to do in the middle of the day when it's dead. Um, yeah. Okay. Great, great question, Nick from, um, He's asking, like, is there any reason you're not doing the DIA or the IWM? And the answer is no, there's no reason I'm not. I, I think it's just one of those pick your battles kind of a thing. Um, the irony is a lot of times I get the best ideas from questions like that. IWM, you know, I, I do trade it. I haven't watched it as much recently, but same, same, this the same principle applies. And, uh, and the IWM is fun. It works, you know, it moves, right? So yeah, there's no particular, there's no reason I, there's not, I don't have a reason why I avoid them other than I'm just trying to narrow my focus. And if, um, you know, this could be something where you look at it and say, wow, I'm only trading IWM. Awesome. You know, and that's great. And of course you could do RUT and all that kind of stuff on it. Um, John, is this a viable system? If you can only day trade the last two hours of the cash session. Okay. That's a good question. I'm, you know, the last two hours is not as clean as the first two hours. That being said, stuff, you know, there's definitely tradable things during the last two hours. And so if we look at even just today, um, you know, today we came down to L2. That was actionable. Uh, that was actionable, you know, intelligence into the close. So it's not as clean as the first two hours. And, you know, we can look at yesterday's close, kind of the same thing. Um, one of the things I like is you'll notice over here, I haven't talked about it very much is that part of the, you know, you know, part of what's included too, is you get like these key time of day markers. I mean, you can write them down too, but a lot of times, you know, around in the line, the cat around 220, a lot of times there's a reversal, you know, and kind of 240 is kind of a, comp a confirm of that. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of times if the market's rallying into like 240, I'll get out of any longs and look to short. And that's just something that just kind of happens. So there's, th so there are things like that. It's, um, it's just not as clean but like anything, you know, if you, if that's the niche you study, you're going to find little things like that, that, um, you know, make it worthwhile. 
Okay, gosh, it is 845, and um, my head cold is about to explode. So I see I'm going to answer two more questions. If we have an account size under 25K, um, then what? Okay, so good question. So if you have an account under 25K, there is that annoying pattern day trading rule. There are things that I've done um, at ex these extreme levels. So like at the end of the day, so let's say you're coming down here and you put on a put credit spread. And the beauty of the SPX, of course, is that it cash settles, uh, meaning that you do not, you won't get assigned. And so, so some things that I've done in smaller accounts like that is, or, you know, you know, you got one here too, is that if you get to that extreme level, um, the odds are that it's not going to get much below that. And you can put on something and then just hold it into the close. The risk of that is if you do it really early in the day, of course, that the risk of reversal is higher. Uh, but that's, so that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it, of course, is you get, you know, I, is it is it three day trades a week now or two, but they don't really like it. But the other trick you can do is you can do ES options. And so believe it or not, so ES options are half the size of the SPX and ES options don't fall under the pattern day trading rule. And so this was kind of my first choice because now all of a sudden you can do whatever you want. And so if I come over here and I look at the ES, um, the main difference here is that, you know, and again, it's the same thing, you know, as you're, you know, if you come over here and say, okay, we're at, you know, 45, 28, and oh, those are the September options. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, ba, 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 45, 28. Um, let's say 45, 29, 45, 30. Uh, oh, this price is going to be different, right? Because of the that's the U. Let me do ES U23 if I did that right. Yeah, 4480. Okay, so if we go to 4480, uh, which is at the money, and just say like, okay, I'm gonna sell a put credit spread, uh, I'm gonna sell a vertical. 4480, I'll buy the 4475. You get a two point credit. Uh, so on one contract, you know, you're risking, um, you know, 137 bucks to make 112. So you can day trade that, or you could just buy a call. You know, buy it for one point. You can day trade that 10 times and it doesn't count as pattern day trading. And look, as we're talking, the S&Ps are going up. So there you go. That was a great question. Uh, last question. Living in Korea, the market opens at 10.30 p.m. So the first two to three hours is all I have to work with. How would you adapt your strategy? Man, that's my choice. I If, if I meet my goal in the first two hours of the day, I'm done. So I, I think that's uh, the best time to trade. Yeah. Um, it makes me want to move to Asia so I can just have the day free, trade at night, and go to bed. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining. I will put this back up here. Again, a quick reminder. Um, if you have not seen any of this stuff before, there's this amazing deal where, you know, the Quant Pivots package is $8.97. Quick Hits is $11.97. You know, if you combine that together, that's like $2,100. But you're actually getting it for just $50 more than uh, the quick hits by itself. And so with that, you get the quant pivots tool. Um, and th there's all kinds of tools that come with quick hits. It's not just the momentum, but you get all these imported, the ability to import all these different Keltner channels and moving averages and, and fun things. Um, it's a really, really remarkable stuff. We're gonna do the class together and then we'll have some live trading. And then again, the summit package includes all that plus if you want to join us in Orlando, and then there's some bonus classes there. I did a portfolio margin class a while back. If you've got a larger account, it's also, if you don't, that's something to attain to and understand the benefits of it. And then Henry's unbalanced butterfly class. If you're not familiar with unbalanced butterflies, they're pretty magical. You know, I call it, you know, you get paid to try and, uh, and that's a really cool thing too. All right. So I'm going to leave this up here. Um, you guys have a fantastic night. It was great hanging out with you. For those of you that are in the gold room, I will see you there tomorrow and uh, have a fantastic evening.